Hey guys, me Rodney at Rusty Relics. Today I'm building a bench for Missy. She wants me to build five of them, so we're going to start off by building the first test bench, which is going to be this one. And uh, I decided I would go with 42 inches long by 11 and a quarter because I bought one by 12s to do these benches with. I'll be making a total of five, but this is the test bench. And you'll see as we go along exactly what I'm trying to do. It's going to be a garden style bench. And initially when I'm planning something out like this, I usually draw it out on paper, but this time I did not. I just decided that I would wing it and uh, winging it obviously takes a little bit longer time. But I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do. And so we're just going along and doing it. Right there, I trimmed up both sides of the, the board one I cut it at 42 and one quarter inch and I went back and cut the other quarter inch off so I could get that factory cut edge off of it because it was pretty rough. Now right here, obviously I'm trying to get my second 42 inch piece done. That's why I had flipped the board around. So we'll just cut it off and that'll leave me with a little bit left afterwards. So that gives me the top and then the sides. I check them real quick, make sure they're both exactly the same size because you need them to be. All right, guys, so what I like to do is, is I like to wax the top of my table saw. That way, whatever I glide across, it gets really smooth. I use Min Wax Finishing Paste Wax. It's a hard wax. And so it'll make it slide easy and it'll protect it. And you only have to reapply every once in a while. So I'm only putting it on the top here. I'm gonna lower the blade down. I'm gonna speed right through this, all right? So like I just got done saying, we're going to wax this with the men wax. You want to brush it off, get all your dust off. That's where one of those cheap bench brushes come in real handy at. And uh, just apply your wax just like you would in anything, any other type of wax. Just wipe it on and then buff it back off when you're done. And it, it, it really makes a huge difference in how easy your wood slides over your table saw surface. I also like to protect my equipment with wax when I'm done. So when I'm actually gonna put it up and put a tarp over it, I'm going to wax it and leave the wax on there without buffing it off. Now it comes time, we're dialing in everything, making sure everything's gonna work smooth. I really like this Dewalt table saw. It's just a contractor saw that they had. I don't know if they still make this model or not. I've had it for a couple of years and it allows me to move my fence and keep it square to the blade. So I use Machina squares to square that up with. Uh, in this video, you'll see me use a regular old uh, speed square, but it's not as accurate. But that table saw is set up with a Machina square. So here I need to cut off a little piece of it to try to even out because this board, I need it to be exact on both sides and it wasn't quite 11 and one quarter inches wide, so I'm just cutting it off and making it even 11 inch. That way I can just split the difference in half so I can cut my front and back piece that's gonna to attach to the bench. And here I'm measuring the teeth on the table saw for the outside. I wanna to try to get it dead center for my five and a half inch cut, which I do right there and run it through. Make sure that you keep your hands clear of the blade. Notice I don't have the protector on there, and you should, you really should. But I don't because it grabs the wood and it's got the paws on the back, and the paws help you with kickback, but I stand clear if you notice. That way, if it does kick back, I'll just uh, get out of the way because kickback can hurt you. I've had it happen to me once before. And uh, I always wear a shield over my face just in case. I don't want sawdust flying up in it. And I, one time I had some, a knot come loose and it struck me in the face. And ever since, I've worn a, the Uvex face shield for table saw work. Also use it on the lathe too. Now we're going to go back in. I'm cutting the legs. The le I need the bench to be 18 inches tall. The wood's three quarter inch. So I cut each one of these uh, 17 and one quarter for the legs. And then I'll take a speed square and I'll mark uh, three inch, two inches in 
or no, three inches in on each side, and then I'll run a 25 degree angle on both of them so I can get me a, my little triangle cut at the bottom, making them a little bit fancier. Originally, I wanted to use a Forstner bit and cut a big uh, round part in the center, but I needed this one to go fast, and I couldn't find my Forstner bits because my I haven't worked in my my garage in probably a little over two and a half years, and I love woodworking, so it's really sad that I haven't done that. But I haven't had much time. You know, we've been doing a lot of stuff at the store, but now you know things are starting to ease up some as far as me having to perform maintenance and everything around the store we got a new employee so that's really good and it'll free me up to be able to make stuff again because i used to make a lot of stuff and bring it in so I, what i did there was i measured two uh three inches up two inches over and then it gave me a angle to cut at 32 and a half degrees and then i turned around and just locked that in on my miter saw and then I just cut my pieces after I measured just the two inches out or the three inches up after that. I didn't have to worry about measuring, but one time or measuring both sides one time, creating my angle and then go back and repeat it. Here, I'm going to make both of these exactly the same size because, you know, even though I had split the difference earlier when I cut it in half, it didn't quite work out. So now I'm just cutting a little sliver off like less than the thickness of a salt blade. And now they're dead even, I'm really pleased with it. So here's where I do exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna take the speed square and, and draw the lines. Well, no, I know, it, my, that's my fault. Right here, I'm actually need to cut these down because the inside measurement of the board after I do everything is gonna be nine and three quarters inch wide on those legs instead of the original 11 inches or 11 and a quarter so i just checked my table saw i decided you know what i'm going to go with the the big end on the right hand side so i can feed it through because that's actually a safer operation and i can stand to the side just in case something does kick and then notice i use a little off cut piece or i use my uh plastic handle part to usually cut off the, the saw and then I lower the blades just in case I accidentally kick everything back on. It's just a habit I have since I left it plugged in. All right, we're going to use a kit, a Craig jig. This thing is awesome. It's for pocket hole work. Uh, Missy let me get this one today at Lowe's. I'm really pleased with this one because it's a lot faster than the one I've been using, which is a little two one that you use a clamp every time this one i just push down on a lever and it clamps it automatically for me so it gives me the correct depth no matter the wood if you get one of these craig jigs no matter what set make sure you set your, your saw blade up correct or not your saw blade your drill bit up correctly to match with both the wood you're using and the screws that you're using and make sure that they go to your surface like if you cut, in this case, we're connecting three quarter inch by three quarter inch. So three quarter inch will work. Three, the the screws that I bought work with the three quarter inch, so it won't push all the way through, and it'll be nice and strong. I like pocket hole joinery. Some people uh, bash it as not real joinery because it's not you know tongue and groove or biscuit joints. But I found personally, I think that through Personal experimentation, I think that Craig joinery is most definitely stronger than biscuit joints. It may not be stronger than dowel rods or pins, but it is stronger than a daggum biscuit joint. And it's much easier. And I have a biscuit jointer. So, there, I just see how easy that is. Once you put your pocket holes in it, it's just putting your screws in. Make sure you line up your edges so it's flush. Yeah, it, theory you could sand it down to flush but then, man that's a lot of sand and you don't want to be doing all that right here i decided i wanted to clamp my craig down because it was moving a while ago which was a pain so I'll go ahead and do the other board the same way and i'm kind of random at how i space it except for on the very ends i try to do the ends exactly the same way because I want to make sure the end is nice. Generally, I will glue everything as well. I did not because, like I said, this is a prototype bench. 
So when I'm first building something like this, I would need to be able to take it back apart pretty quick if I don't like it. But I'll be honest with you, I really enjoyed it. It was a, it's fun. I love building stuff. Missy loves to paint stuff. I love to build stuff. And she said she wanted me to build this bench. I said, all right, I'll build you a bench. And now she wants me to build the rest of them like originally planned for the class. So it really worked out because I can throw it together. I can keep it fairly inexpensive. I mean, wood is priced the way wood's priced. So, I mean, it's not cheap to build, but it's still not as expensive as buying a brand new one at the store. So I get all that Craig together and I throw it over to the side. Now is where I see, I did, I did my drawings with my triangles with speed square. I didn't have my jigsaw, so I was stuck using a Japanese um, flush cut saw or Japanese razor saw. I love these saws, they're great. Uh, they use them as a regular saw. And I didn't realize when I was doing this that I was using a cross cut, my cross cut version on this one as opposed to the ripping. And then the motion that I, the where I'm going with the wood grain is a rip cut. So I should have used a rip cut. So I went and got the rip cut one. And I struggled with it for a few minutes before I realized that I was pinching the, the wood back against the blade, which was my mistake. Because once I got that cleared up, I just went right through it and it cut like butter. And it really is as fast as it looks. Even though this is sped up, it's not sped up very much. So I'm really just going right through this. You start your cut and then you go. And see, I get frustrated pretty easy when it doesn't start easy. And there was a knot right here. It's going to give me a problem. So I'm going to cut through it and just cut through it real slow. Cutting through knots is a pain, even when you're using power tools. There we go. We got our triangles cut into it. It looks nice. It'll give it a, a neat appearance. So we're going to use pocket holes to join those in too. I'm checking it to make sure my width is correct. Then mark my mark on there so I know exactly where I want to put it at. And this one's one of those that you're going to measure a couple times. And you want to put a screw in the corner first, just one corner, make sure it locks down exactly in position because if it doesn't, you'll need to go to your secondary uh, Craig hole to move it. And you'll see I'll do that in a minute where it doesn't line up properly on the first time. So I remove the screw totally and then put in the second screw exactly in position. And I'm using a speed square to make sure I stay straight up and down. And that does. Speed squares come in real handy for a lot of things. And sometimes I'll even take and clamp that, f that fat edge at the bottom towards the front of the wood to hold it in place while I do this. But I needed this one to, since it's a prototype, just to go pretty quick. All in all, I'd say this thing took me about 30 minutes to put together. The next one that I build will probably take an hour, or maybe not because I'm going to be gluing it and I won't have to put together anything. I'll just be pocket hole cutting, pocket holing and then gluing and then putting my screws in. And uh I'm going to do something neat in a few minutes after I get this all lined up and set. I need it to be more sturdy than just the pocket holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive two and a quarter inch screws in through the sides to, to hold the legs to the front and the back plate, but I'm going to countersink the holes with my Craig drill bit. Now that is a very aggressive bit. I don't recommend you do what I did and I won't do it for the next build. I'll be using a standard drill bit so I can control the depth much easier. Then I'll put my screw, I'll drill my holes here and you'll see, I'll have to go back in. If you're doing this, make sure that you Mark your holes first. Use something to kind of leave an indention in the wood too. That way you can drive that uh, drill bit in there pretty easy. See that wasn't sh that was too shallow, so I had to go back in, pull it back out, and then drill it back in. And like I said, it's aggressive, so you have to be super careful. Now I'm going to use dowel rods. I was an idiot the first two times. I cut them on the 
miter saw and so they threw somewhere and I had to go get them. The next one's all cut by hand with the Japanese saw because I really love Japanese pool saws. There, And I'll use it again in a minute too to trim these back off with because they're actually designed to be flexible so you can make real good flush cuts without having to use a oscillating tool or trying to sand it down. You just cut it smooth to the surface. And if you have any gaps or tear out or anything, you can use your wood glue and then take some, uh, I use powdered sawdust and I'll just mix it in with it because you can paint right over it after you sand it smooth. But if you need to be able to stain, you need to use a, a sandable, a stainable wood putty in your hole instead of the glue because you can't sand, you can't sand tight bond. I mean, not sand. You can't stain tight bond. See, I just, I just really love building stuff. And I love this apron that I got. Missy got it for me three Christmases ago when I was really big in the woodworking and wood turning on my lathe because I, I like doing stuff on the lathe. I just hadn't used it in over two years. It's kind of, it's, I don't know, it's really sad when I think about it. But I have an extra belt to put on it, so when I start back, and I will, I'll pop a new belt on there and we'll just go start work. Because it's fun, it's a good way to pass the time, and it's a nice little hobby I have. Here I put the dowels in. They're shorter, so it's harder for me to mash them in with my fingers, so get you a little rubber mallet and a piece of wood and just drive them on in. I'll flip it over and do the same thing. Missy's wiping off the excess glue because the glue can be kind of rough to sand off. I'll take my bench brush and wipe off my other stuff too while I'm at it. Let's see, just make sure that's nailed in real good. Let it dry for about 10 minutes and then start cutting it off. There's an uneven part on the very top where there's, uh, it was rough, and so I just busted out a, a hand plane and then plane that surface smooth right there. You see, it was a real struggle around the knot, but away from the knot, it was nice and easy. Once I got over the, one, I was trying to cut off too much too quick. So once I dropped it down a little bit, see how smooth that went. And it's pulling off real thin shavings of wood, so. A plane is something you want to keep the bottom of it smooth and you want to keep your blade super sharp. That way you can get great results. And here, it's regular speed. This is me using that flush cut, that Japanese saw. And I'm just, it's that simple to cut right through because it's a cross cut. This one in particular is a cross cut blade. And you just hold your hand down on one side to keep it nice and flat. And then you can curve the you can curve it away to make sure you're not cutting into the surface of the wood. You're just cutting your wooden pegs off. And I go nice and slow. And it's it's a very aggressive cut, but it gives you a great smooth finish. So when you go to sand it, there's not gonna be a ton of uh tear out like you would with a any other kind of saw. And then like I said, this is ra a razor saw brand. And these saws are absolutely amazing. My old ag teacher actually showed them to me. They were in our store for sale. I didn't see them. And my old ag teacher, the guy who taught me everything I know about woodworking, showed them to me and said, hey, that's a good deal. You should get those. And so I did. I bought both of them. And it was, it was I got them for a really good deal. But that's it for my part. Uh, Missy's going to take over in just a minute and start painting. All right, guys. So... Missy is going to go over this with some caviar, but there's one thing. She had to prime it first. If not, then all the uh, wood would soak up the paint. And we learned that when we did our class recently and painted the risers. Now, she used clear primer by Dixie Bell Paint Company, and she's coating it with caviar, which is their darkest black color. Uh, the brush she's using is a uh, Dixie Bell Mini. It's a uh, flat brush. Gives you really good results. 
she's just going through and coating it the sides and she's going to do the backs and stuff so oh look at cammy over there in the corner laying down that's our corgi she's a goofy dog always up in your business so right now missy's working around the legs because you have to pay really close attention when you're dealing with the underside of stuff make sure that you don't miss any spots because if somebody flips this bench over and sees that it's not painted all the way they might not like it now if it's just going in your house and you don't care that the underside is not done then by all means leave it here she's just going on that side doing the same thing as before make sure you use plenty of water whenever you're working with this and always try not to paint on raw wood with the chalk paint because it does it soaks it up that's why she went ahead and coated it right here she's getting into the sides up underneath on those legs again see how she sprays the water on it to make it go further soaks it in really good she's really good at doing this kind of stuff she's not as good at talking about it as she is at doing it so she just kind of goes through and does what she does cammy always backwards and forth doing what she's doing now, if you have a corgi, those things, they bark. And they bark loud, like a big dog. Not like a little dog. Like It's not a little yep, 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 yep. It's a big, loud, roof, roof. Like, almost as loud as a Rottweiler. She actually barks louder than our Golden Retriever does. And it's just scare the mess out of you. All right, see right there where she's getting underneath that? She does a really good job of making sure she covers all the little nooks and crannies. Now on this one, I did not glue this one up, but I said that earlier in the video. Because it was just a prototype, we were just playing around with it. Today I actually built five more of them, so that was a lot of work. And Missy's painting right now some tables, I think. That's why she wasn't able to do the voiceover. It looks pretty good. She's getting ready to go in with the buffalo check, which is a lot of fun. I love doing stencils, and uh, I think Missy enjoyed it too. So we use a buffalo check stencil, and she's using the bell brush as she goes down. And she just dabs it, right? You just dab it in because if you brush backwards and forth, what, what happens is you'll get paint glob, and it'll smear underneath your stencil. Now, you don't have to worry about that when you're using one of the uh, Dixie Bell silkscreen stencils, but on this Mylar stencil, we do have to worry about that, so we have to go straight up and down. That way it doesn't give you any kind of globs and messy look, because the last thing you want is for you to go through all this hard work, and then boom, and at the end it just doesn't look good. But all in all on this one, it was awesome she did a fantastic job all i had to help her with really on this was point out a few spots that where the black was showing through the white and then of course uh arrange layering the uh stencil over where we had previous where she had previously painted at to make sure we don't get any stencil lines you see there me using my carpenter pencil pointing out some spots because while she's doing this, I'm still trying to get my work done outside. And so she goes through and she recoats re them. Because what will happen as you move, the chalk paint dries so fast that you can actually go back through and recoat it a second time. Which is what she does right here. And Dixie Bell's products are just by far sup the superior product to me. And that's why we sell it. That's why we use it exclusively. We've used other brands before, and I didn't really like the results I got with them. Right here, she uses a uh, hair dryer to go ahead and dry that. Usually we use a heat gun, but all of them are actually at the store. And I'm washing the stencil off while she's doing this because it's important. You know, you don't want to get too much paint caked up, especially if you're using it back to back. So you rinse it off real good. She tried to dry it with the uh, hair dryer, but that didn't work out. So we sat it on top of the stove because it's a glass top. And wiped it off with paper towel. And then I'll take it to the side in just a second and shake it off again in our laundry room. That way I don't have to worry about it getting on the, the myriad of projects that are behind me 
that she's got going on all at one time. Because when Miss, Missy starts projects, she don't just do one. She does like five or six of them things at a time. So here, same technique, just dabbing through, being careful not to already, not to paint back where you had already been painted at because you don't want to build up too heavy of a layer. Even though she'll probably go back through and distress this or something. I don't really know what she plans on it. I know that there was one spot in particular where she wanted to go back in with some black and do a touch up with one of my art brushes. But right here, along the edges, it'll start curving over. And you'll see in a second, I'll grab it and I'll hold it level. That way it stays flat. And she can just dab right down on top of it just like that. It's not key to hold it. Uh, she likes to tape them down. I don't personally, I don't tape down my stencil. If it slides a little bit, it's my fault. You know, really, she's working on this oversized bench, so it's really important to make sure you tape that down. So she had the right idea. Because if it had been me, I would have messed it up. Because I wouldn't have taped it down. She's drying it with the hair dryer again. I'm wash, re washing the stencil. You know, can't say it enough. Wash the stencil off. That way, it doesn't build up paint on the top of it, messing up your paint job. This time, we're going to layer it over a little bit further. I try to do two blocks, but uh, she wanted me to do more than two blocks over, so you'll see here in just a second. We'll go over, I think, three or four blocks. Four blocks. And she tapes it down there. See, the and the chalk paint's dried so fast that she was able to just tape right over the top of it and i was actually shocked i thought it was going to lift but no it did not that was awesome and she just goes through she's super fast with doing this stuff and uh i think she did a great job and she would like i said she'd be doing a voiceover but she's so busy doing so many other things that i'm having to do this instead uh she did really good like i said straight up and down motion can't say it enough you got to pay attention to what you're doing when you're doing this stuff. It's always have, good to have a second set of eyes to look at it. See, because she can only see it from one angle. I can see it from both. All right, guys. So this is our bench. This was a lot of work, but I think it was very well worth it. Um, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Don't hit, forget to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys next time.